just go ahead and record. And looks like we are recording. Um, so welcome everybody to another rip-roaring edition of the OpenJS Foundation uh, Standards Working Group um, meeting. Um, we have had something of, you know, a nice um, busy last few weeks with not just the um, OpenJS Foundation Collab Summit and the conference last week, which um, Sindil, I you were missed, um, but was uh, quite quite a good time. Um, and then we also had uh, the last two weeks ago. I don't know; it's all blurring together. A TC thirty nine meeting um, at the beginning of December. So those are probably the um, kind of activities to check in on or to re report in on, um, in addition to the items in our uh, in our agenda. Does anybody, um, Mike, uh, Joe, we're, we're, and I know Miles will be joining a little bit late and, and he was able to make the TC39 meeting. Is there anybody who wants to give like an update on, uh, from, um, from that event? Yeah, I, I uh, unfortunately was not able to attend, so I don't have any updates there. Uh, I did not plan anything. Um, uh, there was not a, you know, uh, I think, uh, uh, what are some notable things? The uh, 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 knowable stuff advanced. There was a lot of discussion about, um, uh, what is it, uh, UUIDs and uh, how to hash that out in kind of a general sense that that's uh, something useful, um, but that uh, there was no kind of resolution on uh, how to present UUIDs without adding non-determinism to the language. Uh, mm -hmm. I was, of course, pushing uh, trusted types uh, related proposals. Um, uh, and there seems to be general consensus that uh, there needs to be some way to um, mitigate uh, code execution, you know, arbitrary code execution by a dynamic import um, unwisely used. Uh, other than that, um, I think Mark Miller is, uh, is, uh, has uh, some compartments ideas. So uh, instead of just realms interacting, um, uh, there's an idea of something smaller than a realm, which is, you know, can kind of fail separately and leave a larger system of uh, cooperating compartments working. Um, so it's kind of meant to allow uh, degradation of a system mm -hmm. even when part of it fails. Um, and, you know, there's kind of nailing down more what, uh, what things like out of memory mean. Um, and uh, uh, so, you know, kind of different engines do that differently these, these days, but, uh, but kind of uh, uh, moving that towards um, moving failures that have previously been like, you know, an end of the world uh, scenario uh, to something that can be managed um, uh, in a consistent way. I, I, I'm probably, I know there's at least one proposal that made stage four that I am forgetting, um, but, but that's kind of what I've got right now. Um, I saw Miles join. Um, Miles, we're just going over like, and Mike was just sharing a um, brief kind of report from the TC39 meeting. Um, anything you would want to add in terms of stuff our community should be knowing about, talking about? Yeah, if it, if it wasn't brought up, and then please inter interrupt me if it was, the uh, module attributes proposal went to stage one. Um, that's a proposal that myself, Dan Ehrenberg, um, Sven from the Webpack project, and there's one other individual, Daniel, whose last name escapes me, are all champions on. Um, it's to help unblock some of the upstream issues that we had with JSON modules and subsequent other module format types. So for context, uh, JSON modules got uh, specified within the HTML spec at what working group landed in the spec, um, and at TPAC uh, this past summer, there was pushback on the proposal 
um, specifically related to, or I guess it was October or September. Anyways, it was related to uh, security concerns, specifically that if there was no mechanism for the, you know, person who's fetching the module to explicitly state the format type, um, importing a thing.json, a server could respond with um, a payload that was JavaScript and give a text JavaScript mind type, and it would just execute. There was nothing in the spec that, you know, protected against those cases, and that was seen as a major hazard and security concern. Um, so, you know, a group of folks are examining a couple different avenues to try to unblock this. One is the module attributes proposal, which would either be a single string import thing as JSON or an object um, import thing with, and then uh, braces and then, you know, type module and potentially some other attribute types. Um, went to stage one, there's still a bunch of debate and discussion that needs to happen around it, specifically around um, if there are to be arbitrary types and those types are kind of extendable by the host to be any type of types, um, or if we want to limit it to the single type field. Um, but, you know, I think we, we got some good progress right now. Most people are kind of, you know, hands off until the new year. Mm -hmm. We'll pick it back up. My, I think the hope would be that we can get something that's either moving towards or getting closer to um, stage two for the February meeting. Um, but I think it might be aggressive to assume that we could have like get some consensus on the things we don't agree on and write spec text by then. But I do expect there to be like an update during that meeting and more discussion. Um, obviously one of the things that comes to my mind is, you know, whether we know of peers in the, in our project communities who'd want to be, you know, getting involved in supporting any of this. And I'm sure that's something you've already thought about miles, but, um, just, for for the record, um, you know, do we do we think like the security working group, the Node security working group, or any any groups like that might be um, interested in in following this? Are they already, you know, what kind of notification do we want to kind of lift up on any of this to the broader community? Yeah, I, I know that Dan has been doing is planning to continue to do like user outreach. Mm -hmm. um, one of which those groups could be security. Um, we have had a number of the stakeholders from that team uh, involved. Mm -hmm. um, I think that so far the focus has been more on like usability from a UX and developer experience, mm -hmm. um, but some feedback from security definitely would be helpful. Um, there's also work that's going to be done in kind of like driving this proposal forward um, uh, out of band as well. Um, and so, you know, be good to get some people's feedback on that mm -hmm. as well. Um, thinking, uh, you know, about that, it should, are these little nuggets that I should perhaps be capturing and sharing in, in the, um, weekly project email or is, is that's probably maybe too granular or, um, you know, what should we, I, I I personally think there isn't like a ton of feedback to give. It's still such a mm -hmm. raw proposal mm -hmm. and the champions are definitely reaching out to different groups. I would say what may make sense since you have a direct line to him is maybe see if putting things in that, uh, like if Dan, if Dan's planning to run another user outreach session, yeah. that seems like something that would be good to put in the mailer. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. I should um, sync up with him and just make sure if he's got something he wants to run. Yeah. That's solid. Good idea. Um, rad. Um, speaking of meetings um, for the next, cause, cause you mentioned uh, 2020. <laughs> um, do the, does the committee have its um, 2020 meeting schedule lined out and, and do we think for the next meeting um, we will want to send um, someone from our uh, cohort to participate? Where? I guess I can go look that up right now too while, while the, you all the next The next committee meeting's in Hawaii. 
Oh, Hawaii. Hawaii. It's running conjunction with JSConf Hawaii. I plan to be there already at the meeting and then the last day of JSConf Hawaii. Um, I like, especially considering it is Hawaii, I don't know if it makes a ton of sense for us to send members mm -hmm. of our group there um, with the travel fund, mm -hmm. unless they have explicit like work that they're trying to get done mm -hmm. where they've been brought in as an invited expert. Um, but I'm happy to, you know, represent, you know, things from, from the group at that meeting uh, in lieu of someone else being. No, I think, yeah, I think that's, that's fair. That's quite, quite a trip to make um, without, um, without a specific goal in mind. Um, we, I plan uh, to be attending remotely, just, uh, just FYI. That's a good point too, the remote attendance for proposals that people care about, like we can always try to mm -hmm. help make that happen. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, so I think maybe that's something to have feelers out about uh, among this group if there's um, um, a proposal someone wants to track or participate in the discussion and you're, you're totally right that we could we could um, arrange to make uh, teleconference access available but travel to Hawaii uh, on the on the fund is probably not not the best use of the funds yeah I, I guess the one thing also and this is more of a high level thought about it but not necessarily like an explicit thing is like when we're thinking about delegates from our group and what they're representing like generally and not everyone respects this but like generally the expectation is like if you're a new delegate you're coming you're actually ooh jory i just had an idea <laughs> sorry what, what are, we, we could potentially similar to what the js foundation used to do via boku what if we help with uh sending folks to help with note taking yeah that yeah the reason I got to that is because like one of the challenges with just sending people to the meeting and it being meaningful for them mm -hmm. is that like you're not really expected to be super active in the meetings right away unless you're actively involved in a proposal. And while yeah. general feedback is always like helpful, it's generally more helpful before the meeting. Like if you have things to add into the discussion, it probably should be happening in GitHub. But there is an issue that's happening within the committee of not having enough people to take notes. Um, and we very well could send delegates um, specifically with the intent of helping with note taking. I think that's a great idea. I and I, I think another thing that I like about that, Miles, is it's also a, you know a great way to um, introduce and initiate um, like a diverse group of people into that space too, right? Like, yeah. um, so plus one to that idea. And I, I would even go as far as to, to say, like, maybe for Hawaii, but maybe for other events as well, that, like, it actually might be worthwhile, depending on wh where the delegate's coming from, to actually help sponsor that. Mm -hmm. Because I do know for a fact that ECMA, you know, needs help with this. Yeah. So um, one question then for, then back to Hawaii. Um, Hawaii is obviously quite quite a haul for a lot of folks, but maybe it's not such a haul for um, fun, uh, folks from like, um, you know, Asia, uh, Japan, Australia, or, is there any? Or um, Korea, yeah. as well as the West Coast of the United States. It's not actually that bad. In fact, for, for folks in Asia, other than the Japan meeting, it's actually one of the closest meetings for them. Yeah, so on, on, on that, you know, it might be interesting to see if we've got somebody from our community who would be really interested in attending and would be interested in, like, scribing. Yeah, oh, just as a quick point of order, uh, Richard Gibson needs to be promoted. Oh, thank you. Sorry, Richard. Hold on. He just jumped on. Okay, here we go. Well, I always click away. Hey, hey Richard. I've got a quick question about uh, about uh, uh, kind of pre-meeting meetings. Um, is do we uh, for the 
people who are our are, are regular TC39 attendees, uh, do we run a meeting for project champions and, and, and those folk to kind of brief them on what's coming up and, and gauge their interest in various proposals? I think that that's reasonable. I think like we have this meeting as a biweekly meeting. I think it makes sense perhaps the one that's closest to the next TC39 meeting could be dedicated to that. I think that would be a nice service also, you know, I think I see that as being perhaps jointly beneficial to our project communities and then also to project or proposal champions. Um, I could probably prep a, uh, you know, kind of a very brief summary on, on each of the things that are going up for stage advancement, uh, like a week uh, prior, um, and maybe just get people's feedback and answer questions. One way we've done this at Google that I've found has been really effective has been like starting a doc that has all of the agenda items kind of similar to what Mike was suggesting and then just kind of let members of our group flag on the ones they think are the most important and they'd want to be briefed on then that allows us to kind of like stack rank because often you know there's enough agenda for three days of full plenary it's hard to cover it all in one hour um so that becomes like a good way to figure out like what to prioritize but we don't just kind of like prioritize the issues i find interesting or mm -hmm. find interesting not that mike i don't trust you to be um, you know, a, a good steward here. I actually think you do an amazing job, but just, you know, calling, getting more people oh, involved would be helpful. I'm happy to prep a doc. Uh, uh, I think credit for that particular uh, style of running things, I think goes to Shuya. So I can, yeah, prep, prep something in that vein. Awesome. Love that. Oh, such good ideas we have. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so I, then, you know, that, that's the next, uh, um, TC meeting, uh, TC 39 meeting. There's a CSS working group, um, face to face meeting at Egalia. And I'm sure, I'm certain that Brian, um, I'm not certain. I'm relatively certain that Brian Cardell would, would be, um, participating there, but it does sort of, um, it's, it's an event. It's on our, you know, radar. Um, and want to make sure to give equal weight to W3C stuff too. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, I would reach out to, um, to Brian and, and also Dan Ehrenberg for, for more details. Um, let's see. Uh, other events, then, then I think just kind of rounding out the, the first quarter, just so things are on our radar, the, the TC39 plenary in, um, uh, in Cupertino. And you know what, there's another event that's not on our calendar because it was set before. Um, let me go, and Mark Miller, and then would probably be interested in the TC53. Um, meeting in-person meeting is in Houston um, on the 25th and 26th so um, I'm not sure Richard I feel like this is one you might be interested in you do node red stuff too yes sir right. um, I have in the past but it's been a long time oh, okay This, well, this is a committee that I, I think folks in our community will find interesting and want to participate in. Um, but I just don't know how to like localize it for them right now, right? Because it's a new committee and there's not much to, there's a lot of conversations happening on their, um, on their mailing list, but there's not a lot um, of proposals and stuff coming forward yet. So this is just something I want to keep on our radar, but you know, bearing in mind that it's hard to talk about just now. So I'll add that to the to the calendar. Um, all right, let me go into the issues. 
Um, so so on, on that note, on the note of TC53 and participation, um, we simply need to um, see about getting this, uh, getting the OpenJS Foundation like registered as a member of the of the TC53 committee. So um, maybe this is something, Miles. I can ask you for like advice or help or something on. So what what really would be the like? Are there any concerns on the from? Would there be any concern from the board for us to just like start participating here as delegates? I'm sorry, I was multitasking. Okay. <laughs> you tell me one more time, Joy. Okay, yeah. So, so you know, the the foundation has joined ECMA, and we are, you know, listed as members of participants in TC39. And I'd sent an email um, out to Michael Dolan and to Robin about signing whatever we may need to sign um, to be able to participate in TC53. Um, and I think just probably because they are very busy and aren't, you know, worried about nascent JavaScript technical committees, <laughs> um, I haven't heard back from them. But I just want to make sure that, like, like there's nothing to really be concerned about with regard to, to joining these kinds of groups from the board's perspective. My, my understanding is it is right in our bylaws that this is stuff we want to do. So if you uh, go to openjsf.org and you scroll down to the bottom and you look at OpenJS Foundation Bylaws and you grab mm -hmm. your standards, you will not find anything. I thought it was there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will happen if you do all those things. <laughs> um, you know what, it may have been in our mission statement but like definitely one of the things that was discussed when we were putting things together was like being a center of, ja of gravity for the JavaScript uh, ecosystem and engaging in things, including standards. So um, it is my impression that it should not at all be an issue. Okay. Well, um, then I'll just, I'll just circle back on that thread and make sure, um, you know, that it's okay to go ahead and, you know, push on this a little bit. Cause I would think that with our, so our, some of our projects, which are um, IOT related, that this would be a place that we should be participating more in. And Donovan Buck has uh, you know, volunteered to, um, to really to to be a delegate on on our behalf, you know, and attend meetings and stuff like that, or remotely and otherwise. So, you know, willing interest. Okay, well, that's TC fifty three. Um, and oh yeah, and Peter Hotty and that team, they would love to. They should speak. A, we should. They should do a talk at the next interactive, or whatever we call it. That's an aside. Sorry. Um, um, our next couple of issues are process related. Um, and I feel like we come back to these on a regular basis. Um, Sindil, do you, do you know, can you summarize where we're at with this? Uh -huh. Okay, so I guess like I opened another PR for adding governance to standard scope and that was merged. And after that, uh, we're talking about 23, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, we are expecting someone to come and start uh, or else we just give out word that we are, we are actively accepting nominations for active members, but I'm not sure how this is going to happen. But uh, we are open anybody opening a pull request for adding themselves as an active member just like what we did on CPC would be really great Okay, so really what we need to do is just everybody on this call should open a pull request to add themselves as an active member of the group Like we did on the CPC. Yes. Okay. All right do, Let's do it everybody <laughs> 
we can, we can do it. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, should, should we leave this issue open or should we close it and open a new one that tells everybody what to do? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, I, I would agree to it. Uh, let's do that. Okay. All right. I'm going to close. Um, and then it feels good to close. I like closing issues and it feels like work happened. But now I'm going to open a new one that says, please to join this as an active member. Okay, I'll go and clean that up here in a second. Okay, cool. Go team. Um, next one was yeah, onboarding. Go go forth. Yes, sir. Okay, so this is also a long pending issue. I mean, like, uh, so we should list down all the uh, roles and responsibilities of the representatives and uh, things they should know, they should consider, and uh, for example, any projects or any standards that they have to focus on or have to collaborate between them and which hat to wear, when to wear, those things. And those are the things I, I think, like, those are the things that might be required for any representative who's going to represent us in any of the committee meetings. So I think uh, that is the basic intention behind this issue. I mean, to have a starting point for anybody who wants to start as a representative or who wants to do some representative work here. And it's still open. Uh, I, I probably, I can create a pull request with some of the knowledge that I have, but it might not be complete. Uh, so once I create, we can discuss over it and then probably uh, we can merge the PR or if anybody is interested, can create a pull request. And I think we have discussed this for a longer time, but I think we didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Sorry yeah. for that. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think that's like we, we do kind of run into this problem. I think sometimes where being being a, a newer working group and kind of bootstrapping and trying to figure out kind of where our where our remit is and what we want to do, we end up discussing things um, and which is good. We should discuss. But it's also like there's a balance between the discussion that we need to do to make sure that we're doing the right thing and the thing that we really want to do. And also like the like the action of taking you know taking those steps to actually um, kind of move things forward whether they're the exact right thing or not. So um, then that brings us to speaking of action action we want action um, number six which is the standards um, related travel budget clarification. Um, this is one we spent quite a while discussing last time and I'm not sure if anyone has like the energy to summarize it but I will try if nobody else wants to. <laughs> Um, really, I think what is missing is that we need a um, we we need a like proposal to put forward or or some data to share for um, the <coughs> to the CPC related to how like approximately what our estimate would be in terms of um, travel spend on standard specific work. Um, we talked about getting past data from um, JS Foundation attendees to these events in, in 2018 uh, and 2019, but um, those uh, people disclosed that for the most part they 
either joined the um, meetings remotely or they were able to get their employers to cover the expense. So in fact, the JS Foundation um, did not incur any tra standards travel expense um, in 2018 or 2019. So we don't have that past data. But if we were to, you know, proceed with this, this potential idea of sending someone physically, especially sending someone physically to like scribe or something of that sort, um, we would want to be able to provide to the folks managing the travel budget um, some estimate of what they should expect. Miles, you weren't there for that conversation. I wonder if you have any um, thoughts or guidance for what you would like to see um, or what you would think makes sense to demonstrate to the CPC, to the board, et cetera, since those are hats that you also wear. Um, I mean, depending on the way in which we think about it, like if we're chartered to do this work, it doesn't necessarily require any sort of regular reporting to the CPC. Um, at least like in my opinion, like with the way that we run things in Node, and just interrupt me if this is not useful, but like this, the technical steering committee charters groups such as the build working group or the release working group with owning um, a part of Node's infrastructure process or code base. And um, in lieu of, that group that's been chartered, you know, making any mistakes, they own it. So there's no need for kind of like reporting or updates um, other than perhaps, you know, when necessary for like collaboration, but th like they can be seen as kind of like separate autonomous groups. I don't know if that aligns with exactly what you had in mind. Like perhaps it would be useful to keep the CPC up to date on things, but like kind of my gut from how most of the CPC meetings have gone recently is that like those meetings are so um, busy with just trying to like make sure all the process is in place that it would be like a pretty massive uh, derailment from what those meetings are focused on. Mm, I mean, that's a fair point. We don't want to like, you know, suddenly change the work of the CPC to also include accounting, for example. Um, that would be pretty um, in the weeds. But I, I think at the same time, I was thinking that from like a transparency standpoint and from a data, you know, sharing standpoint, it's kind of nice to say, you know, we think that it's going to be X many that will invest X many dollars in sending people to support these meetings. Cause then at the end you can go, Oh, well, we did that or we didn't do that. Um, and um, the other thing I was thinking was that like, and right. I think right now the other piece is it's, it's not, it's not clear to me if we have that mandate yet because we're not officially chartered by the CPC. We're just, we're more of like the working group. Um, kind of like, I'm not sure how much formality we have, I guess. So, so to, to that, like, I really think formalizing a governance structure and getting like kind of like officially chartered by the CPC to manage the work is like a good step in that direction and kind of would, I don't know, probably work out what the CPC's requirements would be for this because the flip side also, and I recognize many of us in here participate in those calls as well, um, but like there's many other stakeholders there. Like we don't need to pre-optimize for things. If folks over on the CPC are happy to like say, hey, own this, we trust you to use the budget of the travel budget appropriately, we trust you to like manage all of this stuff and just go, mm -hmm. then like we don't really need to like make too much process around it. But if we go and we kind of state, oh yeah, one of the things we'll be responsible for is like going in person, you know, maybe there will be some responsibility or feedback that they'll want about it. Um, but I, I think perhaps the process of trying to charter and own this for the foundation um, will kind of float to the surface the things that we need to more formalize.
So we need uh, perhaps someone to champion slash um, drive um, the, like sharing this governance and the, the governance that we have and engaging with the CPC so that we can kind of get that mandate. Yeah, I'd be happy to do it. I think we just need to flesh out the governance doc, which is most of the way there, and then make a charter and then present it to the committee as, you know, hey, we'd like you to charter us to do this. Mm -hmm. Cool. Because I'm imagining the charter for this group will probably be not too unlike the charter for projects. I probably will not have bandwidth to start digging into that until the new year though. Yeah. So um, please don't take this as a cookie lick. If anyone wants to get started with it, please do so. That is such a great phrase. I like that. <laughs> uh, no, I think, I, I think that's probably true of a lot of the things we want to do here is like, this is, this is functionally our last um, meeting before the new year. So you know, perhaps looking at it as this is setting up shop for what we're, we want to get done quickly. And then in, when we come back in 2020. So, um, cool. That is the last, uh, um, issue or on our agenda is there any other um business or discussion the group wants to take today anything on your heart or mind mike's kids because he's left to go pick up his kiddos joe's furnace because he's having furnace issues okay well i'm gonna end the recording um